Hey, what's up? It's Coach PR holding down for Vlad TV. Today's guest, special guest, former NBA player, Mr. Chris Harron. What's up, sir? How you doing, what's bro? Up, brother, good to be here. Did I say your name right? Yeah. You I did, right? Yeah, what's yeah. going on, man? We finally get to sit down, right? Know, After all this time, man. It's been a couple of misses, but we're here now. But we're here now, man. Everything's cool? Yeah, all good. All right, man. We'll just get right into it, man. From um, Four Rivers, Massachusetts, right? Yeah. Tell us how it was growing up in um, Massachusetts at that time with your future family. You know, Four Rivers is a, is a tough city. Um, it's a blue collar, Mill City. Uh, thrived in the, in the early 1900s on textiles and, and factories. And, you know, at some point those, those go away. So um, it's just, it's a hard nosed city. And it's, it's, you know, when I grew up, basketball was the thing. And, you know, that's something that I was drawn into pretty, at a pretty early age. Um, I tell people all the time, Durfee basketball was bigger than the Boston Celtics. You know, it's, it's, it's pre-social media. So, you know, that was our show. You know, our show was to grow, to grow up and go watch these legends who were 16, 17 years old. Um, but, but that kind of paved my way, you know, that kind of set the tone for me to, to, to aim. You know, like people grow up on to be Larry Bird. I grew up, I just wanted to play Durfee basketball. How you didn't look at Larry Bird? Uh, I, didn't even, I mean, and, and, the, and the reality is in my life, I never looked at any, anything like that. Like, I, and I don't know why, right? It could be something psychological in me, you know, now hindsight looking back with my drug addiction. Um, I never thought I would make it. I never thought like from middle school to high school to college, even in college, it took like a couple of years to say, Hey, like you, you, you might have a chance at this. But that's when it finally hit. Mm. So uh, growing up in Massachusetts, did you have a uh, brother, sisters? Yeah. A bi uh, big brother who was a, le he was a legend in his own time. Um, back to back state champion undefeated two years in a row. You know, when you, when you grow up a Durfee basketball player, you play in front of 4,000 people. Mm, um, crazy. Yeah. I mean, season ticket holders, you know, what? people travel. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 was, it was intense. And, and my brother kind of, he kind of laid out the path for me. Okay, as a kid, you played for, the, was it Millican League? Yeah. Right? Your dad coached. Yeah. How was that, you know, having your dad coach? Because I coached my son, and that's like, it's like we're always going at it. Mm. How's it with your dad? Yeah, it's deep. You know, it's deep. It's 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 you know, it's it's what's right or wrong, right? Like he he raised me to be to be. Right. You know, like he raised me to be. And um, you know, with that comes consequence, with that comes internal conflict and 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 your relationship. Um you know, but but without him, I would have never got to where I where I went. Right. Um, you know, I'll tell you this. I, uh, you know, my son is 24 and Christopher. And I also have a son, Drew, who's 14 and my daughter's in the middle. Uh, I won't coach them. Mm. I'm not built that. I'm not built for it. Like it's I don't want them to see that side of me. Right. You know what I mean? And I've shown it. I've shown that side of me. Um, and, and they don't like it, you know, they don't like yeah. it. And, and I'd rather, I'd rather let someone else show that side, right. you know, than, than and what side is that? Like, what just, you just, side? just that thing, you know, right. that comes out of you. Right. Like, is it intense, intense yeah, coaching? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, you, and, and, you know, I know this from, I was a boy, you know, like you come home winning, like, like you come home winning and. You know, I don't want my kids to see that that and I and I say this, I don't want people to to take this the wrong way, but just see that animal in me. Right. You know what I mean? But the winning animal, I'm trying to Yeah, study. yeah, yeah. It's a winning animal, but, but it's also Can like it be a, a good thing though. Like, no doubt. No right. doubt. And and they get that. They right. they're my son. Right. You know, but I yeah. I don't know. I, I struggle with it now because you got to understand something. I'm, I, I shot heroin for a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've been sober for 14 years. So, you know, that internal battle, what's right, what's mm, wrong, okay. you know, right. it, it, it's, it's hard. Right. And, and as a dad, 
I it's hard to identify the line when it comes to my children on how far to take that line, how right. far to move that line. Right. So did you see that with your dad? With no his doubt. Music, right. Yeah, my dad. My dad. He gave it. He, he raised us to be right. Like you yeah. got to be that guy. Right. Um. You know, but again, like I grew up in alcoholism, addiction. Like my father struggles, man, struggles. You know, my dad, he's the greatest man, greatest man I know, but you know, he's gonna die because of his drinking, Mm. you know? Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know- Did you see that while he was coaching you? I I didn't know what it was. Right. You know, I I just knew Miller Lights. You know, I I just knew knew of Miller Lights. and, and in hindsight, you look back on some of those days, some of those moments, and you wonder, would it have been different? You know, would, would his line have been different right. if he wasn't battling that? Right. But I'll say this. You know, my dad taught me a lesson. I, uh, I played in the McDonald's all, All-Star game right at St. John's, and I was terrible. I was terrible. I was shook. Place is packed. It's a New York theme. I wasn't ready for it. Like I'm, and, and in all reality, like I'm not an all-star guy. You know what I mean? Like that's just not my personality. Right. I want to get ugly with people I'm close to. Right, um, right. So I was terrible. And I left that game crying, man. I was like 17 years old. I was like, wow. I just embarrassed myself on national TV. Yeah, All-American game. All-American yeah. game. And uh, I had my next game was, was back in the day, it was called the... Uh, it was in DC. You played against the DC All Stars, uh, the Dapper Dan, like those type of. Right. And 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 he put me in the car. I said, "I'm not playing in that game, Dad. You know, the Capital Classic. I'm not playing in it. I'm going home. I'm not going to set myself up again." You know, he snatched me, put me in a car, and we drove. And you know, I had a I had a phenomenal game in that game. No, oh, so he took you to the game. He was like, "No, you're yeah, going to play." Yeah, yeah, you're going to play in this game. Yeah. And and the, the, you know, those are the things I remember, right? That's that's those are the moments of his line, you know, when it stuck with me. Right. Mm. To good memories, right? Okay, so back in high school in Durfee. Yeah. Your family, you got some family uh, Hall of Famers there. Mm-hmm. Your grandfather played there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your older brother played. It. Like, how was that? Now playing for them, knowing, knowing that your family, like Durfee royalty. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I knew. We Durfee was the entertainment. You know, Durfee sports was the entertainment in that city for many years, right? I mean, shit, there were three channels on TV, you know, 12 channels. Um, people went out to watch. Um, you know, and growing up, I heard stories of my grandfather, my uncles, my dad, but I witnessed my brother. Right. You know what I mean? Like I had a front row seat to that. So I knew what was coming. I knew what was waiting for me. Right. Um, you know, and the reality is he made that road easier, but he also made it tougher. You know, right. because, because you had to fill in those boots. I had shoes. to fill in those shoes. Right. So, okay, so now you're you're at Durfee. Mm-hmm. And then you started drinking and smoking as a freshman. Mm. What made you get into doing that? It was probably before that, right? It was just the culture. Like, you know, it was people went out on weekends and smoked a little, drank a little. Mm. Um, you know, there, there was, you know, when I was in high school, we could hang out in bars and, you know, be 16, 17 years old, just chilling in ballrooms in, in Fall River. Um, it was just part of the culture. And, you know, I say this all the time, the scariest thing about addiction, nobody knows who has it. So when you're a 17 year old kid sitting on that bar stool drinking, thinking, yo, this is life, this is the life, you have no idea what's coming. It's coming ahead, right? You know what I mean? Right. And and to me, that's the that's the scariest thing about it is at 17, 16 years old, 14, 15, blowing, drinking, I had no clue what was coming. What 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 uh because I see that you started doing acid too in high mm. school, right? Now you go to the next level yep. after the weed and drinking. How did that play, you know? Psychedelics, mushrooms. Acid, um, mescaline, I wasn't afraid of it. You know, I wasn't afraid of it. I wasn't afraid of the drinking, the smoking, the, the, the hallucinations. Um, 
was it a girl that who, what made you get like nah, it was, stuff, just, like, it was just my homeboys it was just it was just our little crew right um yeah i just wasn't afraid of it and and you know you look back right and and you say you know here i am i'm this kid who has tons of promise and i'm doing everything in my power to lose it you know to break it down um you know kids who have it laid out the way it was laid out for me, you know, aren't tripping on acid at four o'clock in the morning at 16. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, most kids, that's not even in their vocabulary yet. Right. I mean, um, you could probably get, you know, weed or probably some Yeah, beer, no right? doubt, no doubt. But then you go to acid, cocaine, right? You, did you say cocaine? Cocaine, then, acid, like, all of it. You know, I mean, cocaine came at BC. Okay. Cocaine didn't come in high school. Okay, um, high school. In high school, you scored 2,073 mm -hmm. points, the most in school history, mm -hmm. while doing acid and mm -hmm. everything. So people will look at him and, and say, shit, I could still get high and smoke weed if he did it like that. That's the worst part about my documentary. The worst part about my documentary is some people say, yo, he balled while he was, while he was messed up. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that to be, you know what I mean? Like, I worked really hard to ball. I put a lot of hours, a lot of time in the gym to get to that, to, to, to achieve that type of success. Um, and in high school and college, I had moments where I broke. I had moments where I went on a run for days partying. Um, you know, but for the most part, I was dialed in. You know, for the most part, when I was, I was dialed in, you have to be dialed in. Um, but I had moments that, that I just ran away. And, and again, that's stage one, stage two, addiction. Right, still the early you know, stage. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to it. And, you know, and, and the reality is the older I got, especially in college, I would go out and people wouldn't want to be with me at night. You know, like once it got to two, three in the morning, dudes were like, yeah, we are. Yo, I'll, I'll, see <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. So um, do you think yeah. that if you didn't get high, yeah. You would have scored, still scored the 2,073 points? Yeah. Or maybe more? Maybe more. I, I didn't, at that time, like I can honestly say that today's, today's basketball player is different, right? Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have a trainer. You did this without training. No you know, training. yeah, like I didn't have a trainer. Like these kids have everything laid out for them now. Yeah. Um, you know, I grew up where five is better than one, right? Like it's about the team, not about the individual. Mm -hmm. Um. So like I, I the only the only place I knew to get better was my driveway, like that's the only place I had in my life where I could get better. You know, was was in my driveway, balling in my driveway. Um, so, you know, there were definitely times in high school where I lacked focus, discipline, which ultimately, in hindsight, hurt me. You know, hurt my game, but. 2073, whatever. I mean, it's still a lot to put up. A lot of numbers. Yeah, you got to put in them.